this woman did, then we can do something about it. So this is a different way to think about this. And yes, it says that what people have found before, they're all little pieces of it, but they haven't seen the big picture. This is really about plasticity, how we make and store memories. So if you now, we're gonna go focus on, okay, what are the molecules involved? How does this actually work? Well, so here is a connection in your brain. It's called a synapse. And there you have in your brain 100 billion nerve cells, neurons, and each one has, on average, about 10,000 connections. So this would be like having a huge sales force of 100 billion people as your sales force, and each one of them had 10,000 contacts. It's huge. You can see now, if they start dropping out these contacts, after a while you don't have the same reach that you did before. So here's one of these contacts. And these contacts, by the way, are just like human relationships. You have courtship, you have commitment, you have function and dysfunction. They talk to, literally these things talk to each other and they both need each other, just like a husband and wife. And unfortunately, when this is not functioning correctly, you can have divorce. So you can have pullback here and then looking for a new partner. So this, this is an ongoing thing in your brain and these connections are critical. You have to have them to make and keep your memories. And now for the first time we can look and say, okay, we can look at specific factors that are involved on the positive side as well as the negative side. And the good news is throughout most of your life you have this beautiful balance, just like having a car where you can go forward, you can go backward. But imagine now that your car lost the forward. So every time you hit the gas, you would go backward no matter what. After a while, you, you'd end up very far back. You could no longer go forward. And that's what happens when this is out of balance. We call this synaptic element interdependence because these two elements are interdependent on each other, just like a wife and husband, same idea. And now if you even go further, and we're gonna go now down to the molecular level, you can look at this molecule here. This is called APT for amyloid precursor protein. What we found is this thing is a critical part of your memory. This is critical for making and storing memories. And it itself is a switch. You can switch it to this side. This is the forgetting side. This is the memorizing side. So this thing, if you cut it here, here, and here, you make four pieces. These are called peptides. And these four pieces are all there normally to pull back on the connections. So there, these are the forgetting peptides. They help you to forget things that you need to forget. On the other hand, there are these two peptides. If you just make one cut here, you get these two guys. And these things are the remembering peptides. They help you to make and store memories and make and store connections in your brain. So, okay, this tells us something very important. When you have Alzheimer's, you have way too much of this and way too little of this and we want to search for treatments that minimize this and increase this. And again, it's no different than if you go to your cardiologist, your cardiologist tells you, we want to keep your HDL down, I'm sorry, your HDL up, your LDL down, your HDL up. We want to give you a good ratio of the good cholesterol, HDL, to the bad cholesterol, LDL. And interestingly, once you get to a certain ratio where you have a good high HDL and a low LDL, as you know, you cannot lay down new plaque. You can't make, in fact, you start now taking up, and this is, of course, the Dean Ornish approach. That's why he's able to put you in a state where you're now picking up the plaques and getting rid of your vascular disease instead of producing more vascular disease. And it's the same story here. There's a balance. This is over here what we call synaptoclastic activity. It's getting rid of the synapses. This is the synaptoclastic activity. And again, this is no different, than, by the way, than what happens in osteoporosis. Imagine you, know, you have your house, and for years, you're always remodeling. You're changing this room, and you're changing that. That's what's happening to your bones. They're being remodeled all the time, and to your brain. Now, imagine that you have a few years where the guys that do the taking down, the pulling down the, the, the destruction side, are continuing to come every week. But the guys that are doing the building side, the contracting side, they're not doing their job. So pretty soon, your house is starting to get smaller and smaller and smaller. And that's what happens in osteoporosis. And that's what we're saying is happening in Alzheimer's disease. So it's an imbalance between the things that break the memories, the forgetting side, 
and the memorizing side. So we've developed now new drugs that literally they call switching drugs. They go from this side to this side. So you get less of this and more of that. <coughs> and one of the immediate questions that came up, you may know about APOE4. So the most important risk factor for Alzheimer's disease is called APOE4. It's apolipoprotein E. And something you can check real easily or your physician can check it. Um, if you know about 23andMe, uh, 23andMe is a genetics company. You can simply go on the internet, get 